Hi, I'm Dr. Marcus Minninger, and I teach New Testament here at Mid-America. And uh, this is a series of uh, podcasts we're doing on the courses in the New Testament curriculum here, so you can get a sense of kind of what flavor they are compared to any other version of similar courses. Uh, the course I'm going to talk about right now is called Intro to Biblical Interpretation. So it's um, not just a New Testament course. It actually func- functions for the whole biblical department, Old Testament and New Testament, talking about uh, biblical interpretation uh, and helping uh, students sort of fine-tune their skills in it, understand the nature of interpretation better, and also practice it, do it themselves. Uh, we do it together in class. Students do it in a major paper throughout the semester, uh, written in different phases, um, and we try to give a lot of feedback and interaction. So th- this class is uh, not like quite like any class that I had when I was in seminary. It's not a class in hermeneutics, meaning it's not a class in the theory of interpretation as such. That's not where it focuses. There are theoretical components to what we talk about, but we're not trying to give a defense for uh, why interpretation is possible or a description of um, uh, the nature of interpretation relative to major hermeneutical debates. Those are valuable as well. But this uh, class is more of a, a um, introduction to a craft or set of skills. It's not a how-to class, and it's not a theory class. It, it exists somewhere in between. Um, it's um, sort of like having an internship in interpretation, in a sense, where you need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, but you also need to develop uh, sensibilities, uh, judgment, uh, to be able to do it well. Interpretation is not mechanistic. I can't tell you Uh, here's 12 steps and you follow these 12 steps in this order and wow the right interpretation will pop out of your you know mind and go onto your computer or or manuscript or whatever um it requires learning to listen learning to um read perceptively um and then learning to think about what you're reading and observe so these are skills that um are sometimes more caught than taught but they're sort of a mix uh, how good of a listener are you? How, how observant are you? And how can you become better at both of those things? There's two big areas of focus in the class, conceptually speaking. One is what we would call grammatical historical interpretation, uh, placing um, a text in its original context. What would these words written in this way in this particular time period by such an author to th- such an audience uh, for these purposes and in that genre, etc.? In that original context, what would these words typically be understood to mean based on the, the uh, grammar of the language and the history of the time period, grammatical, historical interpretation? This is very standard stuff in many ways. Uh, right now, I've been having uh, students read McCartney and Clayton's book, Let the Reader Understand, which is a, a very helpful overview. It, it, it's written by people that have a lot of depth of understanding, but it's written at a fairly accessible level because... Uh, Again, we're not trying to debate all of the uh, underpinnings, but we want students to be up to speed on what they should about uh, author, audience, date, occasion, genre, purpose, all those sorts of things. As a part of that, we do a a segment on uh, literary interpretation. There's pretty good emphasis on that because literary elements of interpretation are often less familiar to students. Uh, We use uh, Mark Allen Powell's book, What is Narrative Criticism, as a part of that, uh, introducing people to uh, how do you interpret a narrative, and then, of course, how do you interpret other kinds of texts that aren't historical narrative as well. Um, But there's a craft to writing different sorts of books, right? So in the Bible, we have history, and we have poetry, prophecy, um, we have uh, apocalypse, we have epistles. Um, There's a way to stylize each of those that's meant to help shape the reader's perception as they read what do they focus their attention on and what do they think about what they focus their attention on all the literary components of writing help contribute to that and so uh, students need to uh, um, learn about all of that literary devices uh, stylistic uh, issues to observe Um, we do a section on lexical semantics Uh, this is uh, sort of like uh, linguistics in a sense that a a little bit of uh, one aspect of linguistics but uh, how do words communicate meaning 
A big part of studying the Bible oftentimes is word studies. Here's an individual word in my passage. How do I know what it means? How do I compare it to its use in other parts of Scripture or outside of Scripture? What are some of the key guidelines there? Uh, what we do there is informed uh, a lot by uh, Moises Silva's book, Biblical Words and Their Meaning, um, some standard uh, sort of linguistic considerations, semantic considerations that we get into there. Uh, what are some common problems in interpretation? Um, the etymological fallacy, the root meaning fallacy, the uh, illegitimate totality transfer, some big words, we explain them, but they're actually key concepts to say, um, I need to use and understand Hebrew and Greek, not in an artificial way, uh, as a reader who doesn't have good facility and kind of forces meaning into texts, uh, but I need to use it as the natural living language that it was back in its era and um, use some sort of common sense principles for how to do it, um, which we often can easily overlook when we get invested in the outcome of interpreting scripture. We get invested and we get in there and we start forcing things in. Uh, we need to back up and say, okay, um, what would proper, sane, well-informed interpretation say about the meaning of this word? in its larger context. And then we do a section on biblical theology. Here we use uh, Voss's Biblical Theology uh, as a key book, but um, other broader things as well. Um, we're talking there about the fact that God has revealed himself not all at once at one time, but over a long history with his people. So there's a history to the Bible, beginning with the earliest revelations to Adam and Eve and uh, Cain and Abel and uh, Noah, etc. And uh, Voss uh, sort of pioneered the discipline of biblical theology in a reformed way. Uh, and we want to say uh, it's important that we read the Bible recognizing that it has different eras, different time periods reflected within it. And when we read an individual passage, we need to place that passage within its redemptive historical era, understand the distinctive traits of each of the eras, uh, uh, and how a passage reflects that its own era, and then, once we place it within its own era, we need to trace backward and forward to understand the whole story of redemption and where a given passage fits. So, big picture, we're doing uh, grammatical historical interpretation and redemptive historical interpretation with a particular emphasis on uh, literary um, uh, sensibilities and proper linguistic usage. Uh, this is all sets students up for the exegesis classes that come uh, later in the curriculum, which is also what we'll talk about in some of the next videos.